Let's call this video 2B. Uh, this is uh, Andrew Klein, and I'm back. Uh, I decided to insert an extra video into this series after I started recording the other ones, and I just really wanted to cover uh, and show you guys how to uh, export out uh, models from a couple of uh, other sources, specifically here, uh, ZBrush, and how to use their turntable features, and just kind of talk about uh, exporting models and other ways to sort of capture footage as well. So what I have right now is my high poly cube here inside of ZBrush. And um, what I want to do is I want to record it and uh, send it out to um, a video format so I can actually use this turntable, uh, another way to sort of display your high poly models. I do think it's preferable to display the final rendered version or the final real time version, but uh, this can be uh, another way to sort of uh, showcase your surfaces. Now, there's a whole bunch of things I'm not going to cover here, like how to change the background and things like that, but uh, those are all things that can be done. Uh, I'm just not going to get to it. Uh, I've got my high poly sculpted model as well. If you want to turn on your poly frame, you can also do that as well by hitting Shift F inside of ZBrush. Uh, you'll see I've got my high poly sculpted model about uh, just under a million polys. I've also turned on perspective because I think it looks a little bit weird if it's not in perspective when it's rotating. And everything I'm going to do pretty much um, you know, with this cube is going to be found in the movie palette. So I'm actually going to dock this movie palette off to the right, uh, and I'll be using it in just a second. Uh, I've also, you notice, uh, sent my material to a custom material. It's the Sculpt MAH modeling material, which is one of my favorite ones to use. Uh, if you don't have this one, I recommend the Matcap Gray material, which is a default material. Now, inside of this movie palette, uh, first off, um, I'm going to be recording a turntable, but I'll get back to this in just a minute. Uh, I'm going to be recording the document only, not the whole window. And I recommend recording this at a large movie size, which is 100%. You can scale this down in After Effects later if you want to put this into your document. Uh, in the modifiers section, uh, I'm going to record this at 30 frames per second and my playback speed at 30 frames per second. Um, and this way it'll be play, playing back uh, the same rate I have here as it will on the DVD. Uh, it's going to spin over the duration of 120 frames and it's going to cycle only once. I'm going to set my cursor size to zero so it doesn't end up in the frame. Uh, I'm going to set in my timeline, actually I don't need to touch the timeline I don't think, uh, let's go to overlay image. I'm going to turn the opacity of my overlay image all the way off. You can overlay your own logo or you can use the ZBrush logo, but I'm going to turn that all off, opacity down to zero. And my title image, you can create your own uh, title. Again, it defaults to the ZBrush image, but I'm going to turn down the fade in and fade out time so that there's nothing there, so that doesn't show up at all. In uh, timeline tracks, there shouldn't be anything I really need to edit here. Uh, oh, and in timeline, actually I do need to edit this. Uh, in timeline, the duration is currently 30. Uh, I'm going to set that to 120 frames, actually 119 frames, uh, so that it just captures what I need for that duration of the rotation. Uh, so I've got this um, all set up, ready to go. Uh, all I need now to do is to, in the movie palette, hit turntable. And it's going to record out this turntable, spinning along the y-axis as defined in the modifier section. And uh, once it's recorded that turntable, uh, I can just go to movie and hit export. Here I can call this, you know, whatever I want. Uh, let's call this cube rotate. Uh, here I can choose my compression type. Uh, I would recommend doing no compression and uh, putting that at best quality and keyframe at 30 frames per second. This will be the playback. We'll just wait for this to finish. And uh, when you're done with ZBrush, we are done. And you'll notice that uh, I've got a video here called Cube Rotate. And it's a pretty sizable file, so that's why it took a little second to open. And there it's chugging because my computer's trying to do too much at once. This is the uncompressed video, which is, how big is this? Uh, half a gig, so probably not the best to uh, try and play here on the desktop. And I can size this down, and I can display this um, inside of my After Effects composition or whatever I sort of nest in Final Cut later on. So uh, I'm going to take my uh, cube movie, I'm just going to store it um, and uh, get back to that in a bit. Now 
Other things I recommend while you're doing screen recording is a program that I use. Uh, this is, you know, if you're working on a Mac, uh, it's called I Show You HD. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, screen record software program. That's what I'm actually recording into right now. Um, so this is one program that I recommend as a solution for you. Uh, if you are using QuickTime or if you're a QuickTime user and you have the new QuickTime X, uh, it has a screen record feature, which I think can be valuable for uh, recording your footage. Uh, that's just as simple as going to file new screen recording. And uh, you'll see here I can choose screen record and uh, start recording. And there I move around, blah, 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 blah. When I'm done, I just hit stop recording. And uh, here's my screen recording of that same screen. Now I've got multiple cursors here, kind of weird, probably weird for you guys to watch. Uh, but that is the QuickTime screen, screen recording program. Um, lastly, you know, if you're uh, not a QuickTime user or if you're not using a Mac and you can't use iShow UHD, uh, the program that I recommend most is actually one called Fraps. And uh, you can download it just by searching for Fraps. Uh, this is a Windows program, a very sort of simple, straightforward, easy to use. You can record footage right out of there. Uh, and this is what I would recommend for, you know, sort of any other screen recording needs that you might have. But all these sort of things, they, they get your videos in order and you should be able to then take those videos and then bring them into After Effects whenever you need and pick us up in, you know, the next video that we'll be looking at, which is the After Effects video. So uh, there you go. Uh, stay tuned for the next one in this series.